Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions present Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball. Live from Cameron Indoor Stadium on campus at Duke University, a sellout crowd of 8,564 on hand here tonight for the first conference game of the year between the Blue Devils and the Virginia Cavaliers. Last season was supposed to be the letdown after Ralph Sampson. Instead, it was a 21-12 campaign with a trip to the NCAA Final Four, highlighted by this 50-48 win over Indiana. But many of the veteran stars from those moments are gone. So the Cavaliers have to rebuild again, and they're four and two so far. It would have been five and one, except for this last second loss to William and Mary earlier this week. The Cavs were playing without three players that night, and the result in Williamsburg was a one-point loss. 54-53. They'll go after Duke tonight without their leading scorer and rebounder, center Olden Polonese. He has taken an indefinite leave of absence from the club. For Duke, the rebuilding process is already accomplished. Mike Krzyzewski's youth movement has evolved into the number four team in the nation with weapons galore like Johnny Dawkins, averaging more than 17 points a game. And Mark Allery, the all-conference forward who leads his club in scoring and rebounding. And center Jay Billis, who hit the way this summer and bulked up to an imposing 235 pounds in the middle. The pressure of the ACC race starts tonight with Virginia against Duke, Terry Holland facing Mike Krzyzewski. It's the Cavaliers and the Blue Devils live from camera. This is ACC basketball with Clemson, Duke, Georgia Tech, Maryland, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Virginia, and Wake Forest. This live coverage is brought to you by Budweiser, NCNB, Piedmont Airlines, Hardy, SCNB, Jefferson Pilot, Mazda, Central Fidelity Bank, and by Amoco. This is Cameron Indoor Stadium on the campus of Duke University. Welcome back to another season of ACC Basketball. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, along with Jeff Mullins, and it's great to have you with us for our opening telecast for the 1984-85 season. The University of Virginia comes in here tonight without its starting center, Olden Polonies. He's on a leave of absence from the team, and Jeff, that puts Dan Merrifield in the middle. And I think Dan Merrifield will do a very admirable job for Virginia tonight, Mike. But the key to tonight's game is the backcourt. Virginia has been averaging almost 19 turnovers a game, and Tim Mullen, who was a forward, is being asked to do most of the ball handling for his team. And tonight, they're matching up against perhaps the two quickest guards in college basketball, Johnny Dawkins and Tommy Amaker. Oh, well, Virginia has problems, Duke doesn't. They're undefeated, ranked fourth in the nation. They're just loaded with talent. Virtually the same team that did so well and finished so strong last year. But what a difference a year can make, Mike. They're playing with a lot of poise, a lot of confidence, and definitely at this point deserve their ranking. Uh, Jeff, they've got two of the premier players, not only in the conference, but in the country, and Mark Allery and Johnny Dawkins. Both very exciting players. Johnny Dawkins is the catalyst that makes their offense go. Great score, good assist man, excellent defender. Mark Allery, one of the great college basketball players, can hurt you inside or out, leads the team in rebounding, scoring, and field goal percentage, a premier performer. It's a pleasure for us tonight to be working with John Kilgo from the ACC Sports Center. John's going to be down at courtside with us throughout the broadcast. John? Mike, thank you very much. It will be interesting to see how this young Virginia team plays here against the Blue Devils tonight. We also have a new rule in all of college basketball this year, a 28-foot coaches box. And at halftime tonight, we're going to be talking to some Atlantic Coast Conference coaches to see how they feel about that new rule. And we'll also be visiting live with Fred Barakat, supervisor of officials in the Atlantic Coast Conference, to tell us how that rule is going to be enforced. So, Mike, that ought to be interesting. All right, John, if anybody can explain it, he can. Well, this should be a good ball game tonight. We'll be back with the starting lineups for tonight's contest right after this. At Piedmont, every one of our jets gets a regular checkup. We take it apart, go over it inch by inch, check out hundreds of thousands of rivets, 
and examine every one of its over 92,000 parts, inside and out. Piedmont's physical fitness program. Over 900 people who never get off the ground help keep us the up-and-coming airline. Isn't it time you experience the outstanding total performance of the Mazda RX-7? Because only then can you feel the seemingly unending flow of power from its unique rotary engine and experience exceptional handling from its near-perfect weight distribution. Only then can you appreciate its aerodynamics at work. Only then will you understand why the RX-7 has become a legend in offering superior sports car value. Mazda RX-7. Experience it. Mileage tests for three of America's highest octane gasolines, Amoco Premium Lead Free Wins. Because Amoco gets its high octane from pure gasoline, not from mileage robbing ingredients that make the others run out of gas sooner. Pure gasoline octane is the reason high performance Amoco Premium Lead Free gives you the best mileage. It's a packed house, as always, here at Cameron Indoor Stadium for Virginia against Duke. And let's take a look at the starting lineups. First for the Cavaliers, Tom Sheehy, 6'9", a sophomore. He'll start at one of the forward positions, along with Dan Merrifield, who's filling in tonight for Olden Polonies. Also up front, Jimmy Miller out of Princeton, West Virginia, 6'8", senior, averaging 11.3 points a game. In the backcourt, Tim Mullen, a converted forward, averaging 11 points a game. And the freshman, John Johnson, 5'11", 160, out of Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York, averaging five points a game. For Duke, Mark Allery, 6'9", a junior, 21 and a half points a game. Dan Mahar, a senior, 6'7", 215, five rebounds a contest. Jay Billis, five and a half rebounds a contest. He's now at 235 pounds. In the backcourt, a great one, Johnny Dawkins, a junior, 6'2", 175 pounds. And Tommy Amaker, the playmaker, a sophomore, 6'8", 155 pounds. Here are the officials for tonight's ball game. The men who will be in control, Jerry Donahue, Paul Hausman, and Dave Dodge. We are set to go with the first ACC game of the year right after this word from Budweiser. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. In any given neighborhood, at any given time, there's one place that always seems to be a step ahead of the competition. One place you can count on for the latest kind of services. One place you know will have the most up-to-date products. That's the kind of place we work to be at NCNV. Still, it's our people that will make us the best bank in North Carolina, one neighborhood at a time. Here are the matchups you'll be looking at tonight. And Jeff, you'd have to say the obvious advantage belongs to Duke, especially in the backcourt. Well, definitely in the backcourt, they have the advantage of experience and quickness. And of course, that's what you'd like to have, particularly the quickness. But in the front court, Virginia, of course, substituting Merrifield for Polonese actually matches up very well with Duke in the front court. That should be an interesting situation. Duke, of course, with a home field advantage, a home court advantage here at Cameron Indoor. There's Terry Holland now in his 11th season with Virginia. And Mike Krzyzewski, who's done a great job rebuilding this club at, in five years here at Duke. We are set to go with the Blue Devils in white, Virginia in the orange. And Merrifield gets the ball outside to John Johnson. This is Merrifield, makes his move to the baseline. 
Very strong player and quick for his size. Mullen with the first bucket of the ball game, the outside jumper. Of course, Duke opens in their man-to-man -man defense. Virginia very patient on offense. Mullen with a classic jumper. Johnny Dawkins guarded by Mullen. Virginia a little surprising. Jeff opens in a man-to-man. -man. Virginia will mix their defense up, but I look for them to play a lot of zone tonight. This is Amaker. John Johnson guarding him. Tommy takes him to the baseline. Won't go. Rebound to Sheehy. Out to Johnson, the freshman out of Brooklyn, New York. A lot of pressure on a freshman playing in this league at this caliber. Loose ball picked up by Jim Miller. Duke in their man-to-man -man defense will want to push Virginia away from the basket by getting hands in the passing lane. Let's see how successful they are. Nice pass from Merrifield inside to Mullen. Mullen missed the jumper from three feet. This is Dawkins. 2-0, Virginia. Looks low for Mahar, instead goes to Hamaker. And now Mark Gallery, one of the premier players in the country. You made a good point, Mike. I think Duke expected Virginia to open in a zone, and perhaps the surprise tactic, that's why they're in this man-to-man. Hamaker -man. penetrates, leans into one, won't go, fight for the rebound, and the Cavaliers will control. This is Mullen, a converted forward, 6-5, playing the guard spot. Cavaliers have been troubled by turnovers just like that. Dawkins with the steal. And Dawkins converts. You can't relax against those Duke guards. Johnny Dawkins with the quick hands. That's the mismatch we talked about. We're tied at two. Full court pressure. Foul in the backcourt on Tommy Amaker. Reaching in against Johnson. They're just cat quick, Jeff. Tim Mullen relaxes just momentarily, trying to set up the offense. There's the quick hands from Johnny Dawkins. And, of course, here's the great speed of Dawkins. Virginia with the basketball. We're tied at two. Opening minutes, first half, 18 minutes to go. The first conference matchup of the season. Johnson trying to post up after low. In and out. Rebound to Phyllis. Ahead to Mahar. Duke 4-2. It's a classic semi-fast break. Danny Mahar busting to get down the court. He was open for the layup. Jeff, I don't know if there's another team in the country with big men that run the court as well as Duke. Johnson, reverse layup won't go. Tip follow misses. Out of bounds. It'll be out to the Cavaliers. One of the reasons our big people run so well, Mike, is that they have such quick guards, and the guards kind of make the forwards run. That's the classic case you like to have. Blue Devils on top, 4-2. to two. Virginia with the basketball. This is Mullen. Has the only two points. He's guarded by Amaker. Mullen with a nice height advantage there, trying to use it from 15 and got it. Tim Mullen, an excellent opportunity shooter from the outside, having a great start this senior season. Mullen has all four points. This is Dawkins. Dishes it off, and we've got a foul inside as Billis goes to the hoop. This is where Johnny Dawkins is the catalyst. He penetrates the seam of the defense, makes a nice pass to Billis. You can see the foul on the wrist. He'll go to the line for two shots. Foul called on Jim Miller, his first, the first in the ball game. And Billis goes to the free throw line. And Jeff, the thing they talk about him, he's shooting 85.7% this year after being a terrible free throw shooter. And I judged him all over. And you talked about him beefing up this summer. And one of the things that's real important for a basketball player, while you're lifting weights and getting stronger, you have to continue to shoot the basketball. And he did that. Billis free throw good again. He said somebody told him you shouldn't lift too much, you'll lose your quickness. He says, I don't have any, no problem. <laughs> But he has become a bigger factor for the Blue Devils, who now lead the Cavaliers 5-4. Virginia with the basketball. Merrifield guarded by Mark Gallery. Mullen, who has all four points. Sheehy, a streak shooter who had trouble with inconsistency. Very down. That's just a great one-on-one -on -one move. Sheehy with a reverse dribble. Nice move to the basket. Virginia back on top, 6-5. Sheehy, a year ago, was the biggest name recruit Virginia had uh, brought in since Ralph Sampson. This is Mahar. Power move, tries to dish it off, gets it back, and scores. Dan Mahar, four points, and Duke in a seesaw ball game back on top, 7-6. Danny Mahar, not ordinarily a good shooter, but off to a great start this year, hitting 61% of his shots from the floor. Merrifield back to Johnson, who's expected to replace Othell Wilson, and that is a tough job. And here is a foul away from the ball. I think it's on Jay Billis. No, it's 
on Sheehy. Offensive foul on Tom Sheehy for Virginia. A lot of infighting inside between Billis and Sheehy. That's a good matchup. And Terry Holland not too happy about it. Roaming around in that 28-foot coach's box. Mallory. Low to Billis. Tried to post up his man. Lost it. Got it back. Now Dawkins with a loose ball. Mahar. Double pop. Won't go. But he'll draw the foul. Merrifield whacked him on the arm. Talk about two physical players. How about Danny yeah. Mahar and Dan Merrifield? That's another matchup to watch. Billis puts the ball on the floor. Almost lost it. Good alert defense by Virginia. Here's Mahar with the shot. The contact. He'll get two free throws. Guys would look at home in shoulder pads and helmets, wouldn't they? Mahar, 215 pounds, 6'7. Even though Billis now outweighs him about 20 pounds, Mahar still looks bigger. Second free throw good again. It's 9-6. Duke with 15 minutes and 51 seconds to go. We have a timeout on the floor at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke leading Virginia 9-6. Isn't it time you experience the outstanding total performance of the Mazda RX-7? Because only then can you feel the seemingly unending flow of power from its unique rotary engine and experience exceptional handling from its near-perfect weight distribution. Only then can you appreciate its aerodynamics at work. Only then will you understand why the RX-7 has become a legend in offering superior sports car value. Mazda RX-7. Experience it. Okay, Dinah, your line is, they took the bone out and left the juiciness in. You want me to read it like that? Yeah, because this is where you... Left the juiciness in. Well, see, this is where you discover New Holly Farms boneless thigh fillets. Oh, I did that. I, I, I did them in the wok, and I did them at the skewers, a uh, shish kebab, and I did them in the microwave with the Parmesan cheese sauce. They're really terrific. This is where we need the super ending. Ah, uh, my simple pecan pie. <laughs> no, America is cooking oh, wait, with Holly Farms. Allow me. America is cooking with Holly Farms. No bones about it. Hi, everybody. Come meet my special Disney friends. We're here. We're all here. Now, only at Hardee's when you buy any sandwich, fries, and Coca-Cola. Get a Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Donald, or Uncle Scrooge stuffed toy for only $1.99. Collect all five. A great gift value for kids of all ages. It's here. It's all here at Hardee's. 9-6, Duke leading Virginia here in the opening minutes of the first half. Last year, the Blue Devils won them both in the home-and-home -home series, but, Jeff, they were both close ball games. Very close ball games, and let's not forget what a wonderful finish Virginia had to their season last year. 9-6, the Blue Devils in control by three. Mullen bringing the ball across midcourt, guarded by Amaker. Very seldom does Duke pick up all, all over the court, but Tommy Amica has been picking the ball up from one end line to the other. This is Derek Sims, another one of those talented freshman recruits in the ball game. He misses. Here comes the foul shot by Sheehy, and he's fouled over the back. Good position by Sheehy underneath. Terry Holland won't be pleased with his first shot. Uh, Force that one, but watch Sheehy on the rebound, and a great pump fake inside gets two Duke defenders off their feet and draws a foul from Allery. That's number one on Mark, first team foul. Sheehy, a 75% free throw shooter, will get a pair at the line, hits the first. Nine, seven, three points on the night for Tom Sheehy, who is averaging almost 11 a game. That's a high in the season of 18. And when he gets hot, he can really kill you. 9-8, the margin one. Amaker with the basketball. Mike Krzyzewski continues to go with his starter. A lot of contact underneath between Dawkins and Derek Sims, and they'll call Derek Sims for a pushing foul away from the ball, and they were really going at each other. Virginia made one change. They're still in their man-to-man -man defense, but they took Tim Mullen off Johnny Dawkins. That time, Sims was guarding him, and it is very physical. Dawkins may be just too quick for Tim Mullen at 6'5", who was used to playing forward to guard him. Almost thrown away by uh, Allery, almost got caught with the double goal. Virginia's now in the 2-3 zone, the defense we expect to see a lot of tonight. And we'll see if Johnny Dawkins can hit some outside shot. He has had some trouble. He travels there. You remember 
especially the last half of last season, Dawkins could not make those outside shots. And here, Jeff, at the start of this year, he's only shooting 38.9% from the floor. Johnny Dawkins wide open against the zone, but he's a little anxious when he gets the ball and shuffles his feet. One of the keys, I think, to stopping Duke, Mike, is to keep Johnny Dawkins out of motion. And you do that by playing the zone and making him shoot the perimeter shots. And he has not been shooting a good percentage. It's 9-8, Duke over Virginia. Sims, nice feed inside. Miller's jumper short. Sheehy hustles for the rebound and gets it back outside to Muller. Merrifield, and Dan Merrifield puts Virginia back on top by one. Dan Merrifield has been in tournament play. He's a good journeyman player. He's going to play hard for you every night. I know Terry Holland has a lot of confidence in him tonight. Dawkins, a beautifully executed play, and how about Johnny Dawkins? Can he score? Beautiful pass from Amaker, nice move by Dawkins, and let's face it, they took advantage of a freshman that time. Sims had never seen that play before, I'm sure. And it really gets the crowd into the ball game. Sims to Merrifield, guarded by Allery. They'll go low to Miller, Phyllis on him. Miller gets the roll. Nice strong move inside by Miller. He has a real soft touch going to the basket. Miller's first two points of the ball game, and he is the leading scorer on the floor for the Cavaliers, averaging 11.3 since Polonese is not with the ball club. Mahar, nice move to the baseline and scores. That can really help the Blue Devils and Dan Mahar if he can be more of an offensive force like that. That's the confidence we talked about in the beginning. Duke is a much more confident team. Mahar would not have made that move last year. And Dan Mahar already has eight points. Here's the steal by Dawkins. Ahead to Allery. Showtime for the Blue Devils. That's exactly what Virginia cannot afford. That's three steals and three baskets for Duke. The transition basket the difference in this ball game thus far. 15-12. Duke with a three-point lead. The give and go to the pass to Sheehy. He walked. Tom Sheehy had a wide open basket, and I think he was so surprised that there was nobody around. A moment ago, he made a great pump fake going to the basket. That time, he had the easy layup. Let's take a look at that steal, the quick hands of Johnny Dawkins. The pass to Allery, he's wide open, and he can really get up. Duke by three, 15-12, with exactly 13 minutes to go. First half of play. Two substitutes for Duke. David Henderson and Billy King, the highly touted freshman in the lineup for Duke. King is 55. This is Henderson, the touted sixth starter from a year ago, and Henderson picks up where he left off. He had missed the first three games of the season with a bad back injury, but came back to play against William and Mary, and he's back in in this one. Mullen beating the pressure to Sims. Another substitute for Virginia. This is Mel Kennedy out to Miller, and Jimmy Miller knocks it down. Virginia doing a great job of moving the basketball and staying very close to Duke. 17 to 14, a three-point lead for Duke. This is Amaker to Henderson. Henderson, Allery pushed off, and they are going to call Allery for the offensive foul. That was a good call by the official because Allery did shove off with that uh, free arm. Official had excellent position to see at that time. Virginia was in the man-to-man. -man. Duke was trying to post up. Virginia will take the basketball. And again, look at Amica picking up pressure, three-quarter court, making it difficult for Virginia to bring the ball up the floor. Give Mullen some credit, too. He's done a pretty nice job. He's only had his pocket picked once. Lean-in jumper by Mel Kennedy makes the basket and draws the foul from Henderson. Kennedy is out of power memorial, and how many great players have come out of that school? And one of the highly touted freshmen in the conference this year. That was just a great athletic move. He went one-on-one. -on -one. He's a great jumper, made a nice shot, and he'll go to the free throw line for one. Foul called on Henderson, his first. Kennedy goes to the free throw line uh, early in the season. He's hit 60% of his shots. He's 6'5", 205. You made a good point a moment ago, Mike, talking about Tim Mullen. That is very difficult, making that transition, particularly in a game like this tonight, where you're running into some very quick guards, but he's doing an admirable job handling the ball. Kennedy completes the three-point play, and with 11.58 to go in the first half, we're tied here at Duke, 17-all. We'll be back at Cameron Indoor Stadium right after this. Get up, rise and shine, gotta get up. You need some gas and you need it fast, so you come to Amaco. 
you're in a hurry, Amico's fast, convenient self-serve is just your speed. And that's one reason more people buy Amico than any other gasoline. Expect more from Amico. We go. Amico. That extra mile. There's a saying in sports. You never know how good a team is until it faces the competition. It's the same in the supermarket business. People tell us they didn't know how much they were overpaying for groceries until they switched the food line. That's because 6,800 low prices every day save you more than a few weekly specials. So if you want to see how the food line team stacks up against the competition, compare. It's 17 all, and here's what has happened so far. Virginia has turned the ball over four times, and Duke has taken advantage of every one of them. Jeff. Well, that's the defensive baskets, the transition baskets that Duke likes to get. Virginia has to protect the basketball to stay in this game. On the other hand, Virginia's done a good job creating two turnovers, and they've gotten five points from those two turnovers. The word is, if you make a mistake in this game, it's going to cost you. And there's the 45-second clock. In uh, opposition to past years, it is on the entire game, which I think is a great move. If you're going to have the clock, it ought to stay in. Should be very exciting in the closing parts of the game. The clock affects these two teams very differently. I don't think it'll have any effect with Duke. Virginia would like to really execute their offense and use a lot of clock. We'll see if it becomes a factor. Tommy Amaker to King. This is Dawkins. Misses from outside again. The rebound goes to Derek Sims. This is Mullen trying to push it up for it. Sims, not shy about putting it up. Mullen is guarded by Henderson. And boy, Henderson is an excellent defensive player as well as somebody who can fill it up at the other end. He just gives you 100% everywhere. Miller on the nice pass and scores against King. Jimmy Miller was six. A bit of a mismatch inside. Billy King, the freshman, 6'6". Six, six. Miller knew it and took him right to the hole. Nice move inside. Virginia by a pair with a fourth-ranked and undefeated Blue Devil. This is Amaker who says directing traffic and tries to get the offense going again. Henderson, he can shoot from there. Good range. Phillips at the high post. Double team. Good defense by the Cavaliers. Virginia staying still in the man-to-man -man defense primarily. Here's a whistle away from the ball. We've got a holding foul that's going to be called, I believe, on Jimmy Miller. The announcers for this game are approved and selected by Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions, any rebroadcast, retransmission, duplication, or reception of this telecast without the express written permission of Raycom Sports, Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. The foul was on Jim Miller, his second. 15 foul call against the Cavaliers. Virginia has 14 fouls. This is King wearing number 55. Dawkins misses from outside again. The rebound goes to Mel Kennedy. King, 55, uh, had Albert King of Maryland as his idol. And he wore 55. As a matter of fact, Maryland tried to recruit him. They even showed him a jersey. But he came down here instead. He got number 55 for Mike Krzyzewski. Try to feed it inside Mahar with a steal. They wanted to get it to Miller. Mahar keeps the ball, goes all the way, and in and scores. Dan Mahar with 10 points. And we're tied again at 19. Good control break by Danny Mahar. Kept his head up all the way, went under control, saw the opening to the basket and took it. Now, last year, you couldn't have expected him to do that. Another loose ball and bodies on the floor. We'll have a jump, and on the alternate possession rule, the ball will go to the Blue Devils. Two turnovers in a row for Virginia. Let's take a look at it. Perhaps the substituting that Duke is doing, they're a little pressure on the court. Virginia does not have the depth that Duke has. Let's see if the turnovers make a deciding difference down the stretch in this half. Terry Holland goes to his bench again and gets in John Dislin out of Knoxville. He is 6'11", 195 pounds, a freshman. Rated one of the top 10 post players in the recruiting wars this year. Terry Holland has got some excellent freshmen on his roster. Talk to Terry Holland before the game. He likes this big center Dizzlin on his team. He says he's not ready yet, but he's going to be a player in this league. Billis turnaround jump shot won't go. Mahar with a rebound. We have a whistle and a foul underneath. It's going to go against the Blue Devils. 
Danny Mahar getting very physical inside against the freshman Dislin. Watch him fight for position, and the official very alertly called the foul. He pushed from behind. He didn't like the call, but he was guilty. Well, Mahar with about a 20, 25 pound weight advantage inside. He has really done a job offensively. Four out of four in the field goal department, a couple of free throws, and 10 early points in a 19-19 tie. But right now, the Cavaliers have the basketball and a chance to go back on top. Derek Sims, number 20, gets it to Mal Kennedy, 21, and Kennedy travels with the basketball. And one of the things you will find with a lot of freshmen on the court, and there are right now, is you're going to make mistakes. No matter how good they were in high school, this is college, and moreover, it's the ACC. And let's not forget, this is their first ACC game, so there's a lot of jitters out there. Kennedy shuffled his feet that time. Mahar gets it to Henderson. Ellery. Missed the shot, whistle, and a foul on an eight. And again, it will go against the Blue Devils. Again, we're going to see a foul on Danny Mahar. She he does a good acting job. Mahar throws him down. But a little bit of an Oscar that time, too. She he deserves an A in acting 101. He got Mahar for his second personal. It always amazes me. These guys, 6'9 and 230, look like they're throwing around like toothpicks. Weldon Williams, number 40, into the ball game for the Blue Devils. He replaces Dan Mahar, who just picked up his second personal. Williams, 6'6", six, six, a junior. Well, he played uh, two games all of last year because of uh, some academic problems, but he is back this season. Baseline drive and the shot by Derek Sims. Won't get the bucket, but he draws the foul, and the call will go on Henderson. That's his second. You have to be impressed with the poise of the Virginia freshman here. Sims going baseline, not intimidated at all. Makes a little contact, draws the foul. Nice move to the basket. Sims comes out of Alexandria, Virginia. Defensively, uh, they'd like to compare him to Othell Wilson. And if he can play defense like Othell did, he's going to be all right. Merrifield checks back into the ball game. Terry Holland knows he has to rest his veteran players, and the freshmen are doing an excellent job for him against his experienced team. Right now, the freshmen have contributed to a 19 Sims buries the first free throw. He's an 80% shooter on the young season. Has his first point on the night. And Virginia has a 20 to 19 lead. And one thing the Cavaliers have done very successfully is take a very boisterous crowd out of this ballgame so far. Free throw good again. And it's the Cavaliers by two with eight minutes and 24 seconds on the turning clock from Durham, North Carolina. Henderson left all alone and he missed it. Ellery followed. Partially blocked. King with a follow. Lost it out of bounds. It'll be out to Duke. Nice block that time by Dislin. Allery not used to getting his jumper blocked. The big freshman knocked it away. Dislin only about 195, 200 pounds. Not a huge physical specimen, but he's learned how to use that 6'11 front. Dawkins was at a tough outside shooting night to King. Rolls into the lane, had a hand on his own rebound. Follow shot is good by Weldon Williams, and he's fouled. Looks like it was Merrifield who committed the personal. One of the few second effort rebounds that Duke has been able to get. That time, Weldon Williams, in the right spot at the right time, has a chance for the three-point play. Number two on Merrifield, he and Jim Miller both have a pair here in the first half. Williams will go to the free throw line. Has missed his only two opportunities earlier in the year. The man's been an excellent shooter from the floor, hitting two-thirds of his shots. Hits this free throw and puts the Blue Devils back on top, 22-21. 7.58 to go first half. We'll be back at Cameron Indoor Stadium in a moment. Every three minutes, every business day, a Piedmont jet is taking off somewhere in America, flying non-stops where other airlines don't, flying no-change flights where other airlines don't, and many times flying around the hassles of big, busy airports. Piedmont. Every three minutes, every day. No wonder they call us the up-and-coming airline. Why is it that in every neighborhood, while dozens of places may come and go, some seem to stay on forever? Because no matter how times change, 
they do what they do better than anybody else, and their customers keep coming back for more. At NCNB, we know that what works for other businesses works for banking. So if we're going to be the best bank in North Carolina, we have to work at it. One neighborhood at a time. It's Duke on top of Virginia, 22-21. Right now, let's go down to courtside for John Kilgo. One of the things, Mike, that is a key to the game so far, Jimmy Miller in the man-to-man -man for Virginia. He's resting now with two fouls, but he's done a great job against Mark Allery and Billy King at this point in the ball game. Thank you, John. And what an assignment to have, too, trying to guard Mark Allery, who's the leading ACC scorer, averaging 21 and a half points a game. There's Jimmy Miller, player of the year in West Virginia three years ago. And good shooting by both ball clubs so far, especially Virginia hitting 57 and a fraction of their shots so far. The Cavaliers with a one-point lead in the basketball. Virginia with seven turnovers thus far in the half. Duke with two. Mullen gets into the lane, gets it off to Miller. Miller was hacked on the arm by Weldon Williams. Remember, stay tuned at the end of the game, and Jeff Mullins and I will be picking a Holly Farms player of the game from each school. And Jeff, that's probably the toughest thing we have to do every ball game is to sort out all the great performances we see and just give an award to two guys. Your basketball is always so good, it's tough to do. Jimmy Miller, such a smart basketball player. That's twice. That time he took Weldon Williams right inside, was able to draw the foul. But he knows when he's got a rookie on him, and he'll take advantage of it every time. There's Jay Billis back into the ball game, and a good look at Jimmy Miller, who's 72% free throw shooter. Six points already in this ball game, and this is this one. Miller was the most valuable player of the NCAA Eastern Regional last year. What a great tournament he had. What a great tournament Virginia had. No question about it. What a finish they had last year, and that's why you can never count Virginia out. When you got Miller and Mullen, Merrifield, guys that have been in tournament play, they know what it takes to win. Miller misses both free throws. And Duke with a chance to regain the lead. Billis just forced it up and got it down. Jay Billis with three points, his first field goal of the day. Billis hitting two-thirds of his shots from the field early in the season. Virginia doing an excellent job of containing the Duke big men inside. John Johnson, the freshman guard, back into the ball game. This is Merrifield. He's going to pull up his dribble. Gets it to Dislin, and Dislin called for the travel. Pressure on the basketball as he catches it. Watch him shuffle his feet a little bit. Looks like there was a little contact, though. He got a little he help, didn't he? Either way. <laughs> got a little help. Sheehy checks back into the ball game for Virginia. Dislin comes out. Terry Holland very alertly senses this is the time he needs to get his veteran front line back in the game. Duke has moved out to a three-point lead. Duke 24, Virginia 21 with 7.01 to go. First half of play. Cavaliers have quitted themselves very well so far in this game against the fourth-ranked Blue Devils. Amaker had the pass get away, tried to get it to Allery, tipped out of bounds by Virginia. Mark Allery's an excellent outside shooter, but watch him fight for position inside. The pass was knocked away. Duke will get the ball out. Allery got around the screen that time and drilled it. Mark Allery, four points, only his second field goal of the game. We saw him fighting for inside position a moment ago, but he can go out to 18 feet, and that's what makes him so tough to guard. Duke now 26-21, an important possession here, and the foul is going to be called on Allery, and that is number three on Mark Allery as he was reaching over the back trying to knock the pass off. Good lead pass into Miller. Allery trying to reach and swat it away, called for the foul. Free throws become so important in these tough-fought conference battles. Not a real smart foul by Mark Allery. He wasn't going to get to that ball anyhow, and he already had two, so he goes out of the ballgame, and senior Todd Anderson at 6'9", out of Golden Valley, Minnesota, checks in. Anderson uh, seldom used. has only scored one point this season. But Allery has to go to the bench with three persons. Miller at the line and missed. Tipped in, but it's overruled. It will be an offensive foul against Virginia, and it's called on Tom Sheehy. He picks up personal number two. Great effort inside. You've got to like that by Sheehy. Got the left hand on the ball, tipped it in. That's three missed free throws in a row by Miller and Virginia. They can be critical. 26-21, and 
Dan Mahar will go to the free throw line. Mahar hitting 72% of the shots so far from the charity stripe. He's two out of two tonight. And he missed that one. Dawkins with a rebound. Johnny Dawkins, who averages almost four and a half rebounds a game. They get it low to Billis, double team, backs in on Merrifield, puts it up and in. Jay Billis. He has five points, and it's Duke by seven at 28-21. The Blue Devils on a run. Virginia needs to get a good shot at the basket this time. They need to be very patient offensively. Merrifield with a nice move. Shot won't go. The rebound goes to Jay Billis. At 235 pounds after working on the weights this summer, because of the tendonitis in his knees, he didn't run all summer. Dawkins moving on Mullen. Nice defense by Mullen to keep him out of there. And here's a whistle and a foul away from the ball. It's going to be on John Johnson, the freshman guard from Brooklyn who is shoving people around. And Johnson picks up his first person. We're in the bonus situation. Right through a screen set by Todd Anderson. Duke has scored seven straight and leads by seven, 28-21. And Terry Holland wants to talk it over with his ball club as he has seen a 21-21 tie go to a seven-point Duke advantage. Five minutes and 48 seconds to go in our first conference game of the year, and we'll be back with more right after this. Buds for everyone who scrapes it, sprays it, and lays it on smooth. This buds for you, for all you do. The king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This buds for you. No possession is more precious than life, and no business more rewarding than improving life. At Jefferson Pilot, we've spent over 75 years making lives better, richer, and more secure through our companies in insurance, broadcasting, and publishing. Jefferson Pilot, dedicated to life and the things that make it worth living. This exclusive ACC coverage is brought to you by Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Stay with us at halftime. Coming up, John Kilgo will talk to the ACC supervisor of officials, Fred Bearcat. They'll be talking about this season's new rules, including that coach's box. We'll also take a look at the University of Virginia. Our new shot board, Jeff Collins will be going over that. And scores and highlights if we have a chance of other ball games, not only this afternoon, but going on tonight. Missed shot by Anderson. Loose ball saved by Jimmy Miller. Cavaliers need a basket here, Joe. That's a big miss for Duke, too. And Cavaliers have to take the ball inside if they can. Try to make something happen close to the basket. This is Sheehy to Miller. Terry Holland has his starters back on the court. You can bet after that timeout that Terry Holland said, let's be patient on offense. Miller, force one from the lane, won't go. Loose ball, tipped out of bounds. Finally, off the hands of Todd Anderson, and it will go to Virginia. And Holland will go to the bench and get Derek Sims back into the ball game, and we'll send Johnson out of there. Not a bad shot in the paint by Miller that time. Virginia very patient on offense, and then Merrifield made a great effort to save the rebound. A little trouble getting the ball in. Finally get it to Merrifield. Sims looks for Sheehy. With a low to Merrifield, a little turnaround jumper, couldn't get the roll. It was half halfway down, came back out on him. Dawkins on the run where he's at his best, but is forced to pull up. Can't fault the last two shots by Virginia. I'm sure that's what Terry Holland wanted, the inside shot. The tough part is when you execute your offense, get the good shots, and they still won't fall for you. Dawkins, who has had a tough time from outside, to Anderson. Outside to Amaker. Alley up to Dawkins for the second time. Amaker has put it right near the hoop, and Dawkins has slammed it through. He has six. That's the second time he's caught the freshman, Derek Sims. Nine points in a row, and here's a traveling violation called against Sims. And the 
Cavaliers did not like the call. They thought Sims was tripped. That's where experience means so much. Johnny Dawkins, after that offensive play, really went after Sims, tried to draw the charge. You can see Sims shuffle, it, Sims shuffle his feet. Duke has scored nine points in a row. Dawkins tries to make it 11, won't go. Phyllis crashes the boards. Merrifield tries to save it, picked out of bounds after Duke. Off of Dan Merrifield. And Duke has really picked up its intensity. Here's the alley-oop play to Dawkins. You feel like you can just throw it as high as you want. He's going to go up and get it. Amazing play for a 6'3 guard. Here it is again. Dawkins scores. 11 points in a row for the Blue Devils. It's 32-21. And on that last replay, you saw what a great camera crew we had. Nice job, guys. A pleasure to be back with you working basketball. Mullen drives to the baseline over Amaker. Won't go. Nice rebound by Sheehy. Double team lost it out to Duke. And nothing is going Virginia's way right now. And you can see Jeff, they're getting a little bit frustrated. There's the shot by Mullen. Almost in. They've been taking good shots. Good effort by Sheehy. You can see him throw the ball out of bounds. A little upset with the call, though. Terry Holland's got to be wondering whether he needs a timeout here. The score was tied at 21. Since then, Duke has run off 11 in a row. Here's a whistle and a foul. And it's going to be against Billy King for the Blue Devils. Away from the ball, pushing off inside. And Terry Holland was up like a rocket off the Virginia bench wanting that call. The explosiveness of Johnny Dawkins, Mike, you can see when he's in motion, whether it be the alley-oop or going to the basket, he's a much better offensive player. Up until the last few moments, Virginia's done a good job of containing that. Miller will go to the free throw line where he has missed all three opportunities, and he came in at 72% on the season. Normally a very good free throw shooter. Hits this one. He'll get another, and that breaks an 11-point string for Duke. It's 32-22. The Duke students waving their arms behind the basket. Don't make it any easier, but Miller's a pressure for four. In and out on the second one. Miller now one out of four from the free throw line. This is Dawkins. Picked up by Sims. Gets it to Amaker. Remember, Johnny Dawkins was a point guard until Tommy Amaker came here and freed him of those duties. Phyllis loses the ball underneath. Good defense by the Cavaliers, and here comes Mullen with the left-hand dribble. Mullen hit his first two shots. Hasn't done much since then. Sheehy baseline. Miller offensive rebound, and Miller called for the personal foul, and boy, is he speed. That's number three on Jim Miller. And remember, Duke is doing all this with Mark Gallery on the bench. Good long rebound. Miller goes up strong. Billy King jumping back a little bit, but King will go to the free throw line. Miller a little upset with the call. Great effort inside by both players. You've got to frighten anybody here scouting from another club to realize that this run came with Allery on the bench. Well, the freshmen have really contributed, and Duke has more depth this year. You've got to give it to Virginia, though, too. They're playing a really gallant effort. And if they had colonies tonight, where might they be? King misses the free throw, but Henderson gets the rebound. Off his knee, out of bounds, out to the Cavalier. We're down to 3.07 to go, first half. Virginia's doing an excellent job of double-teaming the ball. That's twice in a row. Mullins has got his hand on the ball. That time he deflected it off Henderson's knee out of bounds. Mullins guarded by Amaker, throws the ball away. The steal goes to Henderson. Great pass, loops it ahead, and a blocking, or a charging foul, rather, is called on Henderson, and Tim Mullen was the man who got him to run into it. Save the layup at the other end. Mullen gets good position. Henderson leaves his feet. Taking the pass to Dawkins. Excellent defense by Virginia. Good call, too. Williams comes back in. Henderson will come out after picking up his third personal foul. So you got Allery and Henderson with three for the Blue Devils. Jim Miller has three for Virginia. Mullen, free throw line, has four points on the night. He is now 17 out of 18 this season. Just a terrific free throw shoot. Well, young players at home could look at his form. He's an excellent concentration, good body position. Watch the follow through. Swishes another one, and it's 
Cavaliers have now scored three straight points after Duke had run off 11 in a row. We're down to 2.46. First half of play, and it's 32-24. Amaker to Johnny Dawkins, who has not hit an outside jumper and still has it. Rebound to Mullen. Virginia will push the ball up the floor after a long rebound, but basically they're waiting to slow it down and run their offense. Sheehy lost control, but the Cavaliers save it, and a traveling violation he is called underneath, and Virginia wanted a foul on that play, too. Mel Kennedy thought he was knocked down. The last five minutes have been very physical underneath the boards. Good defensive effort by both teams. Kennedy, another of those freshmen, 6'5", 205, out of Long Island City, New York. Amaker and Dawkins, the backcourt. Weldon Williams up front, almost threw it away and did. Dawkins tried to save it, couldn't play. And now Merrifield and Dawkins with a push, and a technical foul will be called against Dan Merrifield. Protest from the Virginia bench it happened right in front of them and they're going to reach out and get uh, Dan Merrifield and bring him back. Let's see if we can see it on the replay. Cross court pass. Merrifield over there next to the official must have said something. Couldn't see his face or what he said, but certainly Johnny Dawkins hit the free throw. It'll be a one shot technical, of course. Dawkins now with nine points and gives Duke. A nine-point lead at 33-24. Terry Howell looking on. Couldn't have been too flagrant. Merrifield stays in the ballgame. Dawkins to Amaker. Jumper by Johnny Dawkins, and he finally got one of those 15-footers. Johnny Dawkins with 11, and an 11-point lead for Duke at 35-24. Blue Devils have another new player on the court, Kevin Strickland, number 31, a 6'5", 190-pound freshman. This is Sheehy. Nice fake against Billis, draws the foul. Got Billis up in the air, and Jay commits his first foul of the night. Sheehy has great instincts around the basket. He knows how to get the defender up in the air and draw the foul. That time, he really wasn't trying to make the shot. Let's take a look at it. He just wanted to make the contact, get to the free throw line, and then if it went in, that'd be gravy. Good defense, good offensive basketball. Personal foul number one on Billis, and Sheehy will go to the free throw line. Sheehy so far tonight, four points and five rebounds. There's two for two from the free throw line. Nice opening game for Tom Sheehy. Well, the coach's box has not come into play yet tonight. If you're unfamiliar with it, we'll uh, explain that at halftime with John Kilgo. Sheehy, only a sophomore, hits the free throw. Had trouble with consistency last year, but Jeff, when he was on, he was a joy to watch. He had some great games last year for a freshman and really helped his Virginia team. 35-25. Virginia back within 10. Now they've cut it to nine. Sheehy scores again with a minute 50 to go. Sheehy was six first half points. Dawkins and Amaker in there. Strickland, Phyllis, and King, the Blue Devil front court. Got it, and there's a foul underneath. It will go against Duke. Kevin Strickland, the freshman, has the green light to shoot the outside shot because he's an excellent perimeter shooter. He hit that one. Strickland in high school had a high game of 47. Sounds like some numbers you rang up, doesn't it? <laughs> That's a good night for anybody. King picks up the personal. And going to the free throw line is Mel Kennedy. Three points on the night. One out of one from the strike. Free throw is good. 37-27. Duke continues by 10. The strength of that lead, an 11-point streak that they ran up earlier in the half. A minute 35 to go. First half of play from Durham, North Carolina. Mike Patrick and Jeff Mullins, nice to have you with us for our opening telecast of the season. Hope you're enjoying the ball game. Kennedy makes the second. The lead is cut to nine at 37 and 28. Virginia back in the 2-3 zone. The defense that they play so well. Tommy Amaker short on the jumper. Here comes Virginia on the run. Controlled break. And Mullen will pull it up a little bit. 
Try to go underneath the ball off the fingertips of Merrifield, but it must have been touched by a Duke player because they'll give it to the Cavaliers under the bucket. Willis ruled as the last man to touch it. Kennedy will be the trigger man. Mullen, who tried to use his height advantage on Amaker early in the ballgame, has not done much of that lately. Merrifield muscles one up over Billis, misses the shot. The rebound goes to Strickland. Dumps it off to Amaker. Duke dominating the game in the uh, last 10 minutes of this first half after it was very, very even early. That was not a good shot that time by Merrifield. He rushed it a little bit inside, wasn't able to draw the foul. Dawkins back to Amaker. Dawkins. That's two in a row from that spot for Johnny Dawkins. He has 13. It's amazing how if you get a couple of easy baskets, the outside shots start to fall. Perfect example with Johnny Dawkins. It's 39, 28, 24 seconds left in the half. Let's see if Virginia plays for one. She. 15 seconds. Merrifield dishes it out. They'll take the jumper from Kennedy, and he buries it. Seven points. Virginia fans got to like what they see in this freshman, Kennedy. Excellent play. Tip follow outside will not go, and that is the buzzer. The end of the first half with the score. Duke 39 and Virginia 30. And Jeff Lee had said at the opening of the telecast that the absence of Olden Colonies probably wouldn't hit Virginia up front, uh, hurt Virginia up front as much as some people would think. And I think Merrifield played, did a pretty decent job. Here. Well, this is a classic ACC contest. A lot of emotion, very physical play. Duke playing a good basketball game, but Virginia very stubborn, fighting hard and their backcourt doing a reasonably good job. They do have double-figure turnovers, and that's basically the difference in the ballgame. Stay with us at the half. We have John Kilgo talking with ACC Supervisor of Officials Fred Barakat. That'll be about this season's new rules. Also, a look at the University of Virginia. We'll have all new shot board that Jeff Mullins will be going over, and time permitting scores and highlights of other games. We're at halftime here at Durham, North Carolina, where the Blue Devils lead the Cavaliers 39-30. This exclusive ACC coverage is brought to you by Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. We're at halftime between fourth-ranked and undefeated Duke and the Cavaliers of Virginia. Right now, the Blue Devils holding a 39-30 halftime lead. Right now, let's get out of the floor level and John Kilgo. John? You know, we do have a new rule in college basketball this year, not just in the Atlantic Coast Conference, but all of college basketball. A 20-foot foot coaches circle is measured from the baseline of the court up to the mid-court point where the hash mark comes in. If a coach goes out of that box while the clock is running, it's a technical foul. He can go out for one reason. He can go to the scorer's table to talk about a correctable error, but when he goes, he had better be right. Although we're early in the basketball season, it is already a controversial rule, and last week we talked to several ACC coaches about how they feel about this rule. If it helps the official officiate a better game, I'm all for it. I think as we look at this experiment this year, instead of just asking coaches what they think about it, I think we should spend a little bit of time asking officials and the supervisor of officials, I think in our own conference, Fred Barakat, and ask him, did, did this coaching box help your officials officiate better? If it is, if it, if it does that, then, then keep it. And I think it's rather ridiculous. It's not needed in college basketball. I think for the most part, coaches do behave very normally along the sidelines. And I'm disappointed the Rules Committee felt uh, they had to have it in order to uh, put down the coaches. Coaches should be the same as any other sport. Like I was a baseball coach, and it was fun to jump up and down the dugout. But you can't do that in basketball now. <laughs> That dreaded box. Are you kidding me? I'm getting into I'm going to have another hernia trying to stay in the darn thing, for God's sakes. You know, I, what I told the refs, though, I've got a nice thing going on. Before the game, when they come over to me, and I know what they're going to tell me. You see, they're going to tell me before they say I say, hey, listen, fellas, that's my box. You stay out of that box. That's my box. You want a box, get your own box. I'm in there. Don't you come in there now, you know? 
Another thing Jim Valvano said, he says last year he wore a size 11 and a half shoe. This year, 10 and a half. That gives him an inch or two to stay inside that coach's box. With us right now, the supervisor of officials for basketball in the Atlantic Coast Conference, Fred Barraquette. Fred, number one, I want to ask you about this, uh, the coach's box rule. How do you feel about it, and how do the officials feel about it, even though it's early now? Well, as you said, John, it's very early. It's difficult for us to make an assessment, but I think it's going to work out to the officials' advantage in that it does keep under control the coach's uh, maneuverability along the sideline. From time to time, we've had some trouble with the coaches roaming in front of the scorer's table, and that particular situation has led to some technical fouls uh, in crucial parts of the game. And I think that the fact that they know that they can't move outside that 28-foot uh, coach's box is going to keep them more in control, and as a result, may decline in, the, in terms of technical fouls on coaches. One of the things about there's a line on the floor up there at the hash mark, 28 feet, the coaches don't have much room to move. Like, whoever saw a coach want to walk toward the baseline, right, Fred? Let's face it. Now, if a coach goes out of that box while the clock is running, he does not have a legitimate reason. Is it an automatic technical foul, or, there, or is there judgment involved? Well, there's a little bit of judgment involved, John. We don't want to uh, uh, penalize a coach if he's coaching his team and his foot happens to go over the line by a tiny margin. We, we have to understand the spirit and intent of the rule. It's basically to control the, uh, the uh, vo uh, voicing of displeasure on officials' calls. And if a coach is out of that box uh, voicing that displeasure, then the spirit and intent calls for a technical foul. But if, it's, if he's a little bit out of the box and he's coaching his team, he's not violating the principle of the rule. What about the potential for, for controversy in this rule? Do you, what do you see, if any, uh, in that way of it that might be controversial during the course of the season? I think it's going to be very controversial because we here in the ACC are not interpreting it in a, simply, a simple black and white situation. We're going to give a little bit of a gray area, but with that gray area, we're going to cause ourselves some problems. We realize that. But the game is for our players and the game is for our coaches. We want to take the rule, but we don't want the rule to strangle us. We want to interpret that rule realistically, not literally. Okay, Fred, thank you very much for being with us, and we'll visit with you a lot during the course thank of the you. season. That's Fred Barakat, the supervisor of basketball officials for the Atlantic Coast Conference, and now back up to Mike Patrick. John Kilgo, thank you very much, and our thanks to Fred Barakat for being with us here at halftime, where it's Duke 39 and Virginia 30. Stay tuned as halftime continues after this word from your local ACC stations. From WRAL TV, this is an Action News 5 News Brief. Good evening. We're working on these stories for you tonight after the basketball game. Rufus Edmiston holds a fundraiser in hopes of clearing the slate and campaign debts equaling a quarter million dollars. More on that. The Capitol is almost complete tonight. The halls are decked in the sights and smells of Christmas. We'll update that story for you. And new tanning pills are put to the test. I'm Denise Boyer. Join us for those stories and more coming up tonight after the game. Join us then. We're at halftime in Durham, North Carolina, where the Blue Devils of Duke are leading the Virginia Cavaliers 39-30 in our first telecast of the 1984-85 season. Right now, let's take a look at the University of Virginia. Thomas Jefferson once said, the objects of all science are the freedom and happiness of man. At the University of Virginia, which he founded, Scientists and engineers are pursuing new knowledge with the same goals Jefferson championed. From pioneering studies on the environmental impact of acid rain to the development of microscopic electronic components used by radio astronomers worldwide, research at UVA benefits all of us. At the engineering school, Materials scientists are developing lightweight alloys and composite materials that will make airliners, military aircraft, and even automobiles more energy efficient. One such alloy combines aluminum and lithium, the lightest metal found in nature. Because of its durability, and because it reduces the weight of a plane as much as 20%, this alloy will be used in a new generation of energy-saving aircraft. At UVA's new Center for Computer-Aided Engineering, researchers are making advances in computer graphics, simulation, 
and computer-aided design and manufacturing. These scientists and engineers at UVA are working to meet Thomas Jefferson's goal to further our freedom and our happiness. You're watching halftime of ACC basketball with Duke leading Virginia by nine and Durham, North Carolina will be back right after this word from Budweiser. This is the opening game of the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship season with Duke leading Virginia by nine. We'll be back with the second half of action right after this. This live coverage is brought to you by Budweiser, NCNB, Piedmont Airlines, Subaru, SCNB, Food Lion, Jefferson Pilot, Central Fidelity Bank, and by Hardee's. The only place, any place in the world to be is the Final Four, and you can win an all-expense-paid trip. Check with your local Jefferson Standard Life or Pilot Life agents for a free entry blank. At the conclusion of this game, we'll be selecting an outstanding player from each team as the Holly Farms player of the game. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed to the institutions under a conference-approved plan in the names of these two players. At the end of the season, each player winning the Player of the Game Award will receive a plaque from Holly Farms recognizing the honor. Let's take a look at our Hardy's halftime stats and good shooting by the Blue Devils. You remember, Jeff, Virginia had been shooting very, very well, but they got cold near the end of the half. Well, I think perhaps the pressure defense bothered them a little bit from the field. However, they've done a good job at the free throw line. Even though they missed three free throws in a row at a key time, they've still been to the line 16 times, and they've gotten 12 points from there. We expected uh, the Cavaliers to have more turnovers, but Duke has nine in the first half, so that really hasn't been that much of a factor. you got to say Virginia's done a good job, except for that one spurt where they missed some free throws and turned the ball over, and it, it led to easy baskets for Duke. It's been a very close ball game. Let's take a look at our uh, shot board and see if that tells us anything uh, from the first half. Looking at Virginia, you can see that they only got three baskets in the painted area. That's in close to the basket. Every coach wants their baskets inside if they can. Duke's done a good job of taking that away from them. Now, when we go down to the other end and look at the Duke baskets, you're going to see something very telling. Now, by my count, they have 13 baskets within 10 feet of the basket. That's too easy, and I know Terry Holland looked at the same thing at halftime, and he's going to be telling his guys, we got to keep them outside. Miller and Kennedy with seven points apiece. Mullen and Sheehy had six. And Duke, of course, uh, Dawkins and Danny Mahar have dominated the scoring chart. 23 of the 39 points in the first half. Dawkins, no surprise. Mahar, maybe with 10 points and a half, is. Try the alley-oop underneath. Loose ball. Miller loses it to Phyllis. Dawkins. by Johnny Dawkins. Nobody was there to help him going to the basket. Nice move by Dawkins. They've got to get Johnny Dawkins a little bit more under control if they're going to get in this ballgame. Dawkins, leading scorer in the ballgame. He has 15. This is the jumper by John Johnson. Won't go for him. Loose ball comes outside. Here come the Blue Devils. Three on two. Dawkins in the middle. Mahar missed the wide open jumper. And three Cavaliers after the ball, and they tip it out of bounds. That typifies what has happened to Virginia most of this ballgame. And that's frustration. Here's three Virginia players hustling after the ball, not knowing who they were. They knock it out of bounds. Tommy Amaker in control of the ball against that zone. Great pass to Billis for the jam. Jay Billis with seven points, and the Blue Devils now on top, 43-30. Exactly what Terry Holland didn't want to happen, letting Duke get off and getting the first two buckets. Jay Billis showing how he uses that extra 35 pounds this year. Merrifield, double team. Duke doing a good job switching on defense. Now they try to get it to Merrifield. The ball kicked out of bounds. And Terry Holland goes to his bench immediately. 21 Mel Kennedy and 20 Derek Sims checking their ball game. Merrifield comes out, as does John Johnson, the freshman guard from Brooklyn. Kennedy had seven points the first half, a very good first half for the freshman, particularly considering it's his first ACC contest. This is Mullen directing traffic from the outside. 
At 6'5", he is the point guard. This is Sims, good long-range shooter. He misses this one, the rebound to Allery. And the foul from behind called on Tom Sheehy. That is his third. Miller already has three for the Cavaliers. Reaching over the back, Sheehy, that's a little bit of a frustration foul. Going to the boards aggressively, couldn't hold back. Duke leading 43-30. Hawkins fakes his outside jumper. And now Emmerker will set up the offense again. Allery, guarded by Miller, leans into one. Got it. Mark Allery, six points on the night, and it's 45-30. The Blue Devils starting to open it up. They have won four straight games this year. The smallest victory margin has been 13 points. And right now, they have built a 15-point lead over the Virginia Cavaliers with 7.58, 17.58 to go in the game. We'll pause for this one. Every three minutes, every business day, a Piedmont jet is taking off somewhere in America, flying non-stops where other airlines don't, flying no-change flights where other airlines don't, and many times flying around the hassles of big, busy airports. Piedmont. Every three minutes, every day. No wonder they call us the up-and-coming airline. Schmidson at that meeting. Snow or no snow? No, none. I want Schmidson at that meeting. Snow or no snow? Boulder? I want Schmidson at that meeting. Snow or no snow? Edelmeyer? You know who to call when you have to get a package there. But what do you do when you have to get a person there? No matter how crazy the weather. You drive a Subaru. Or you may get stuck with something else. When you see an ACC game, it's not surprising the pros shop here for quality players. And when you see the low prices, it's not surprising that the pros of the food service business shop at Food Line. They know that Food Line has 6,800 low prices. That's why thousands of buyers from restaurants, cafeterias, schools, hospitals, and other institutions shop at Food Line every week. Just ask one of the pros. It has been all Duke Blue Devils here in the second half. They lead now by 15 at 45-30. And the Virginia Cavaliers with Terry Holland pulling all the strings he can, trying to find a combination that works right now. Duke with a 15-point lead is back in a 2-3 zone. They very seldom play a zone defense, but Krzyzewski with the lead decides to sock it in. This is Sims going baseline, leans into a jumper, and got the roll. May have been tipped in by Sheehy. Derek Sims, very aggressive offensively. Doesn't mind looking at the basket. That was a nice drive along the baseline. Yes, they give the basket to Sims, and the lead is cut to 13. Here is a foul away from the ball on Kennedy. And Kennedy, at 205 pounds, charged with pushing Mahar. I don't think Danny Mahar that. trying to fight for position. Kennedy fighting back is called for the foul. So many times the second foul will be called. Mahar tried to pass along the baseline, threw it out of bounds, and you'll excuse me if I ask, do you really believe that Mel Kennedy can throw Dan Mahar about six feet? I don't. Another one of those great Oscars. And here's contact again between Mahar and Kennedy at the other end of the court, and Kennedy is saying, come on, Mahar really popped me one that time. Let's see who they call the foul on. Let's take a look at the action at the other end of the floor, if we can see it. Well, that's going to be pretty tough for Kennedy to defend himself against that one, isn't it? Looks like the referees called in nothing, and they just decided to settle things down. It looks like it's still going to be Virginia basketball. Mike Krzyzewski decides to take Danny Mahar out of the game momentarily. Well, they don't call a personal foul on that one, and King comes into the ball game for Virginia. Terry Holland up arguing his case. Mike Krzyzewski just up giving signal to his club. Sometimes a no call, and the referee's just calling everybody together and saying, guys, let's settle down a little bit. Works better than calling the foul. Mullen. This is Merrifield taking way far away from the basket by Allery. Kennedy lost the ball. 
and Mullen wants to set up the offense again. Remember, we're using that 45-second shot clock. It has not been a factor yet in the game. Miller, a lot of contact, missed a wide-open shot, and the rebound goes to Allery. Virginia can't buy one right now. Amaker to Johnny Dawkins, guarded by the freshman Sims. Load Allery off his fingertips out of bounds. Second turnover in a row for the Blue Devils. As they get a little sloppy, of course, right now they can afford to with a 45-32 lead. Miller had no room to go anywhere, rushed the shot a little bit. Good, strong rebound inside by Allery. Defense! Mullen Defense! with the ball. Moves it low and intercepted by Billis. Amaker pushing it up court, a lot of contact, and the foul will go against the Cavaliers. And it's on Mullen. Virginia with 13 turnovers now, Duke with nine. That last pass by Mullins, the pressure defense bothers him just a little bit. He threw the pass, anticipating his teammate going one way. He went the other. 45-32, the margin 13 points for the undefeated Blue Devils. 16-23 to go in the ballgame. Amaker has King outside, directs traffic. King and Dawkins go to the same side. They go to the weak side to Allery, and Allery's jumper won't go. Kennedy comes down with it, some contact, and no whistle. Mullen. Tries to bounce pass, whistle, and a foul reaching in. And it's Billis to pick up the personal. That's number two on Jay Billis. Another way the pressure defense works is it pulls the Virginia offense way away from the basket. That time, Miller having to come all the way out to the top of the key, not where they want him playing. Miller gets two cracks at it, got the second one down, and Miller with nine points. And it's 45 to 34. Virginia pulls back to 11 down. Amaker calls out the play. Virginia still in the man-to-man -man defense, but they're sagging it in a lot more this half, trying to cut out the penetration, particularly of Dawkins. Sheehy has checked into the Cavalier lineup. Amaker looks low, can't find anyone. Now he'll take it in himself, runs into Mullen. They'll call Tim Mullen for the blocking foul. It's number two in a hurry on Mullen. Isolated on one side of the court, decided to go to the basket. Mullen was almost there, but he was on the side. Called for the foul. Danny Mahar back in for the Blue Devils up front. And Allery with a rare turnover. Here comes Miller for Virginia. They can cut it within 10. I mean, Mullen. His jumper won't go. Rebound to Kennedy. Follow won't go. And Duke comes out with the ball. Jake Phillips clears the glass. Would have been a big basket, gotten down to nine points. I think maybe Coach Holland would have liked to seen them set it up and run their offense a little bit more that time. Virginia needs a basket. Allery low to Mahar, and Dan Mahar scores inside. He has a dozen. Mahar averages 10 and a half points a game, 13 his high for this season. He's within one of that, and it's 47-34 Duke. Danny Mahar was a member of the Canadian Olympic team this summer, played a lot of basketball, and you can really see it in his improved skills. Sims, nowhere to go, commits himself and gets it to Sheehy. Buffet, missed the shot, and Jim Miller with a nice tip inside. Miller with 11 points. Here's Sheehy fighting for position inside. Mahar backs up. Sheehy wide open. I think he was a little surprised to be that open. Dawkins rims one out. Miller with a rebound. Ahead to Mullen. Almost threw it away. 47-36. The margin is 11. Miller left all alone. Won't take the shot. Then penetrates. Double up and got it. Jimmy Miller, 13 points. And single-handedly trying to get the Cavaliers back in it. They're down by nine. Jimmy Miller's statistics aren't always impressive, but I'll tell you, in the big games, he seems to always be there. Virginia needs a big game from him tonight, and he's supplying it. 20th Cavalier player in history to score more than 1,000 points in his career. This is Mahar, who's had the big offensive night. Mahar with 14. That is his season's high. 49-38, the margin nine for the Blue Devils. 
That time, Mahar sensed that Kennedy, the freshman, was on him. He has a great deal of confidence inside against the young player. Again, looking for that quick jumper. Mullen running the Virginia offense. This is Derek Sims, one of the freshmen that Terry Holland brought in this year. Mullen to Miller. That's Mullen cutting baseline and hit a nice pass from Miller. And Mullen executed the play well. He has eight. Virginia wants to get the ball to Miller inside. They got it to him, and he very wisely gave it up to the open cutter, Mullen. Cavaliers doing a nice job of staying in the ball game. Duke had a chance to blow them away with a 15-point lead, but couldn't do it. Allery with a nice soft cut, got the roll. Only eight points for Mark Gallery, who comes in as the ACC's leading scorer at 21 and a half a ball game. Mahar has picked up a lot of the slack tonight for him. Nice move underneath. Nine points for Kennedy, and what a find he's been. He's had an excellent half. I talked to Coach Holland before the game and asked him what type of player Kennedy was, and he likened him to David Henderson, the sixth man for Duke. Johnny Dawkins from the perimeter, and Dawkins now with 17. The tempo picking up, and it's 53-42, the margin 11. Sims goes to Sheehy, bad angle shot from the baseline, but got the roll, and if Sheehy gets a hot hand, he can get the Cavaliers back. Important thing happening on the offensive ends, too. Virginia all of a sudden getting a lot of hoops in the painted area. They're getting the ball inside. That's what's bringing them back. 53-44. Allery will go, but there's a foul. And it's on Kennedy. Allery making a nice move. Kennedy going up, getting him on the wrist. The freshman defender trying to do an excellent job called for the foul. Mark Allery with only eight points tonight. This is his first trip to the free throw line. Mullen will come out of the ball game for the Cavaliers and back in is uh, freshman point guard John Johnson. Free throw by Allery, short, no good. Allery is an 82% free throw shooter. He was the ACC Player of the Week last week. Just off to a tremendous start. Hits this free throw. Allery has nine points, and Duke has a 10-point lead with 11.36 left to go in the ballgame. It's the Blue Devils 54, the Cavaliers 44. This exclusive ACC coverage is brought to you by Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. Bell Kennedy is certainly a freshman to watch this year, and he gives great quickness to the front line of Virginia. Look at him go baseline up strong. He has the athletic ability to stuff it, but he very wisely laid it in. Virgin Virginia coach Terry Holland would love to have this guy, his assistant coach Jeff Jones, in the game to handle the ball for him. But, of course, all he can do is tell him how to do it and not do it himself. Well, that's why they only let you play four years. There'd be guys in this league who'd be 44. You'd still be down there playing. <laughs> You'd still be wearing 44. Here's the steal by Henderson. Got it to Amaker. Back to Henderson. Had the ball stripped away. Great steal by Johnson. Miller will go in one on two. Missed the shot. It was good. And a foul. Oh, what action. The Cavaliers will not quit. Excellent. That started with an excellent defensive play by Johnson, knocking the ball away from Henderson. Let's look at the whole play. Here's, here's the knockaway right there, the steal. Virginia starts their fast break. Excellent tip in. Another angle on the steal. The pass up court. Jimmy Miller went strong to the basket and missed it. The freshman Sims tipped it in, and he was fouled. Good play by Sims. Chance for a three-point play, and he knocks it down. It's 54-47. Closest the Cavaliers have been in a long while. These freshmen may be inexperienced for Virginia, but I sense some very good athletes out there on the floor. Excellent play by Sims that time. They have fought back from down 15. It was 45-30. Now they're within seven points. Now they're in the 2-3 zone, the defense they like to play so much. Henderson to Dawkins, and Johnny Dawkins starting to get hot from outside. He has 19 points. Came into the game averaging 17.3. What numbers he has rung up. Five and a half assists a game, four and a half rebounds. Back up to nine points. This is Johnson. 
blocked by Amico. Jim Miller in the lane and got it. Miller's now in with 15 points and it's 56 to 49. We're approaching the 10 minute mark in the second half. That was just an excellent one-on-one -on -one move that time by Miller. He went right to the basket. Nice soft 10 foot jump shot. King wanted the alley-oop. Amaker couldn't get it to him and Dan Mahar carries it. Mahar with 16 points. Duke was tough enough to play Jeff Mullins before Dan Mahar decided to be an offensive Well, they player. really hurt you when they can beat you so many different ways. Tonight, Mahar is showing a, a very improved outside shot. Miller's shot won't go. Kennedy underneath. A lot of contact. Kennedy over the back of the Duke player. No call. Blue Devils back on the attack. Dawkins again missed this one. Rebound to Johnson. Here come the Cavaliers. It's a four on three. Johnson behind the back. And the shot is good by Derek Sims. Not only behind the back, but he kind of showed the ball to his right, came back around and threw it to Sims on his left. Excellent play for the freshman. These guys are great athletes. I tell you what, it's a good thing that pass was good because Terry Howland would have been all over him if it hadn't have been. That's the one where the coach says, oh, nice play. That's right. 58-51. Ball kicked out of bounds by the Cavaliers. Duke will have the basketball. Allery checks back into the lineup. And King will come out. Let's take a look at some real good ball hand. Look at him look the defender off, come back behind the back. It wasn't necessary, but what a great play. And Derek Sims completed the play. 58-51 with 9.15 left to go. Cavaliers hanging tough against the undefeated Blue Devils. Henderson baseline shot. He likes to shoot from there. Tipped out of bounds by Virginia out to Duke. One of the Cavaliers got a hand on it, but couldn't hold it. David Henderson still looking for his rhythm. He's an excellent perimeter shooter normally, but this is only the second game he's played this season. Got to remember, he had that back injury and lost three games. Here's a pass underneath. Miller saves it, got it into Johnson. Johnson has a player ahead of the pack, can't find him. Look at Sims. Now Johnson will set up the offense. Nice move to get around Dawkins, and Johnson will put it up. Won't go, rebound him all. Amaker checking the scoreboard overhead. Got away from Sims, and then Sims committed the personal foul, reaching in. Tommy Amaker hasn't scored in this ballgame, but he does have half a dozen assists, and they don't look to him for points anyway. He's the kind of player every coach would like to have, regardless of whether he scores. Good quarterback. He's alert enough, as he was that time, to know when he has an opening, he's got to take advantage of it. He was able to draw the foul that time. When Amaker was recruited at Duke, now he has seven assists. When he was recruited here, he took over the point guard spot from Johnny Dawkins and racked up 163 assists last year. That was the number three all-time single-season assist record. I believe he's going to rewrite the record books when it comes to assists. He's a great floor leader. Mullen comes back into the ballgame. Sims comes out. The number of point guards in this league that are great point guards. Isn't it ever? 59-51, the margin is eight. Amaker eyes the basket for a second time. Sheehy will check back in for Virginia. And the freshman John Dislin comes out. He was in there very briefly. Dislin pr played pretty well in the first half. Quite a, quite a crop of freshmen for Terry Holland. Had to go out and get some help, and he did just that. Amaker, loose ball, the Cavaliers save it. Knocked out of bounds, off the hands of Bahar. Now normally when you see a player slide, that's when they call a travel, and Sheehy went about five yards. Great effort by Sheehy getting down on the floor. Coaches love to see that. In fact, they almost insist upon it, and players today, I'm telling you, are on the floor all the time. Great effort. They'll clean up the aftermath in midcourt. Cavaliers just won't go away. The Blue Devils had him down by 15 right now. The spread is nine. It's 60 to 51. And the orange-clad Virginia Cavaliers have the basketball. Kennedy into Johnson. Kennedy has had a nice first ACC game. Freshman out of Power Memorial, where the then Lou Alcindor made that school famous. School no longer has basketball. Miller with a power jam off the pass from Muller. 
Mullen not exceptionally quick, as we pointed out, but that time he got in the seam of the Duke defense, made a nice assist to his teammate Miller. What a half Miller has had. alley to Henderson a little long, but he got it back under control and put it in. Henderson with four points. 62-53, seven minutes, 38 seconds left. That 45-second clock will remain on the entire game. We will not have stall ball this year in the ACC. Sheehy, line drive shot and hammered it home. Sheehy with 10. I'll tell you, this Virginia team is playing an excellent second half of basketball, getting the kind of shots they want and really burying them. Even if the Cavaliers cannot come back and win this ball game, it's going to help this young club an awful lot. Hallerich's long range length won't go. The rebound goes to Kennedy. Johnson, Virginia trying to run. Johnson puts it up in the lane and scores. It's 62-57. Johnson's first two points have cut the Duke lead from 15 to 5. There is a timeout called by the Blue Devils with 6.59 left to go. It's Duke 62, Virginia 57. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. The people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. when you buy any sandwich, fries, and Coca-Cola. Get a Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Donald, or Uncle Scrooge stuffed toy for only $1.99. Collect all five. A great gift value for kids of all ages. Saturday, we've got a big ball game for you. North Carolina Tar Heels against the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. That comes from Greensboro. Check your local listings for the time and availability in your area. Jeff Mullins and I will be there. Here's a very alert play by the ball handling guard, Johnny Johnson of Virginia. Watch him look at his teammates, but he sees the opening, makes a nice move to the basket. If you're a Virginia fan, Mike, you've got to like the confidence these freshmen are showing. You know, the first half was kind of like asking themselves, can I play in this league? And the second half, they're saying, hey, I can play yes, in this I league. Can. The University of Virginia, after uh, being very cold at the start of this half, has outscored Duke 27 to 17. Stay tuned at the end of the game. We'll be picking a Holly Farm player of the game from each school. You can start thinking about that right now, Jeff. I'm about giving up that assignment this year. It's too tough. 62-57, Allery with the ball in the lane. Just puts it up with the right hand. It won't go for him, and the Cavaliers have the ball. Mullen gets it out to John Johnson, who's really played well in the second half, to Jim Miller. This is Sheehy. Triple move in the lane, and got the roll. Sheehy scores at 62-59. That is 12 for the sophomore from Rochester, New York. Boy, now the crowd on its feet. And he loves it. She has great instincts inside. He made about three fakes that time before he shot it. Nice soft touch. Amaker left alone. He'll try the jumper. Big basket for Tommy Amaker. His first field goal at only four points, but he couldn't have hit a bigger shot right there. 64-59, six minutes left. Not an easy thing to do when you have to have a basket and you haven't scored all game. Give Tommy Amaker some credit. Johnson goes to Mullen. Miller at the high post. Defense. Kennedy, Defense. the freshman goes baseline, won't go. Miller tries to keep it alive, but it's Johnny all the way. A lot of contact, and it's a blocking foul called against the Cavaliers, and Johnson really upset, and Terry Holland comes off the bench. Let's take a look at it. John almost jumped over him. Well, he was a little bit on the side. Could have been called either way, but Johnny Dawkins will go to the line for two free throws. Dawkins with 19 points tonight. One out of one from the free throw line. Knocks it down.
Hawkins comes in shooting 74.2% from the free throw line and averaging 17. <laughs> so the Blue Devils challenge opened up a seven point lead again at 66 59. 538 left. Duke back in their man to man pressure, picking up at half court. And here is a foul called on Dan Mahar as he and Sheehy were going at it. And for Mahar, that's number three. Danny Mahar always falling on the floor. This is one of those first second. Mahar fighting for position. Then you'll see Sheehy give a little elbow, but it, the first foul was called. Mahar and Sheehy, Virginia will keep the basketball. I'll tell you what, Mahar, uh, it says uh, he's majoring in history. I think he's taking a couple of theater courses. I don't think you can knock down that guy with a truck, and he has gone down on the court a couple times for a little bumps. This is Johnson against the zone defense to Mullen. Johnson from 20. Won't go. Billis with a big rebound. Jay Billis now at 235 pounds, a much stronger player in the middle. And like the rest of the Duke team, he is much more confident. Cross court Dawkins, nice ball move. Amaker back to Johnny Dawkins. Clock becoming a factor, 455 left. Virginia is still in the 2-3 zone. I wonder how long Duke will be before they'll ask him to come out. Nice move by Johnny Dawkins. Dawkins with a running jump shot, 23 points at 68-59. The margin back up to nine. The Cavaliers had gotten within three, and then Duke has exploded to lead 68-59 with four minutes and 41 seconds left to go. We'll be back for the rest of this game from Durham after this. And that's not all, gentlemen. It was Leo who coined the phrase, the more you pack, the more you sell. When Leo said that he would be there by nine, he would be there by eight. Leo even discovered markets we didn't even know existed. <laughs> Gentlemen, I give you Leo. The new Subaru wagon is larger, more powerful, and one wagon that really gets you places. Time was to plan a retirement. All a man had was hard work and whatever wealth he could muster. Later, companies helped with pension plans, and the government pitched in with Social Security. Today, there's even more help. At NCNB, you can put your IRA in CDs, money market accounts, stocks, and other investments. Investor Option IRAs. One more way we look to be the best bank in North Carolina. One neighborhood at a time. Four minutes, 41 seconds left to go here in Durham, and it's Duke by 9, 68-59, as they've opened it up a little bit. Virginia got within three other scores. Georgetown over Nevada, Las Vegas. I think the Hoyas could go bear hunting with a switch. They just blew out UNLV. DePaul over Notre Dame. Those two teams will play next week, Georgetown and DePaul. Purdue over South Carolina by 22. UCLA goes down the drain again, this time to Memphis State. Indiana beats Kentucky. The Wildcats off to a one and three start. Tonight, North Carolina faced its first real challenge of the game and won by 22 at home. Wake Forest by a pair over Appalachian State. North Carolina State clobbers Western Carolina 103-67. Can't wait to see State this year. Maryland with a big win. They knock off Alabama 59 to 56. So that will get you up to date. North Carolina State's got everybody's head turning, and they haven't had a close game yet, blowing out everybody they've played. 68-59, the margin is nine. Virginia trying to cut into it right now. Mullen to Johnson, trying to force Virginia outside. As the Cavaliers, Jeff, have been very successful inside. Kennedy's perimeter jumper won't go. Tip won't go. Another tip. This time it will go, and it's Sheehy. Sheehy showing a lot of guts inside. He has 14 points. I'm impressed with the Virginia freshmen, too. They're not afraid to take the shot down the wire. That time, Kennedy made a nice move. The ball almost went in. It was right in the hole. Sheehy there to tip it in. Sheehy has had a big second hand. Now, Terry Holland will go to his bench again. Anthony Solomon, a guard in the ball game. He's a 5'10 sophomore out of Newport News. Played only 30 minutes a year ago. He has played more than that in the first six ball games of this season. Duke spreading it out a little bit. 
four minutes left, but the shot clock stays on the whole game. Loose ball. Kennedy, three on one break, dishes it off, and the layup for the Cavaliers makes it 68 to 63. ACC basketball and the Raycom Sports Jefferson Pilot Teleproduction Network has been brought to you in part by Holly Farms and Mazda. Looks like Terry Holland anticipated that Duke might spread out the defense because they were prepared that time, made a nice steal. Virginia down by five points. The interesting thing about this spread is with the shot clock running, you've got to go out of this back into your regular offense. You might look for Duke to try to isolate Dawkins, who has that great quickness advantage, or Amica, and let them go to the basket. Shot clock is down to eight seconds. And Duke will have to get off the shot or lose the ball. Amica with three seconds on the shot clock. And got it. Another clutch bucket for Tommy Amica. 70 to 63, the margin is seven. Just inside three minutes. And Jeff, I have to be honest with you, I love the fact that that shot clock stays on the entire game. Well, I think it makes the basketball very exciting for us and for the fans. Solomon gets it off to Kendall. Solomon, stripped to the ball, tipped it, and it's picked off by Dawkins. Solomon had just checked into the ball game, the inexperienced sophomore, and he commits the critical turnover. That's a tough situation to come in. The ball sure handling is. guard and a very close game like this, you're not really warm. He tried to do a little bit too much too fast. Two minutes, 20 seconds left to go in the game. It's Duke by seven, and the Blue Devils trying to run as much time off that clock as possible. You know, it really changes the strategy of these delay games, Mike, because not only are you delaying, but you have to continue attacking because you know within 45 seconds, there's only 10 left now. You have to take a shot. Crowd helping Dawkins as they count it off. Billis goes baseline, reverse jam by Jay Billis. What a shot. He has nine, and it's 72 to 63. The Blue Devils have hit two big buckets in a row. What a difference a year makes. We're seeing it in Mahar. We're seeing it in Billis tonight. Dawkins and Allery were great players last year. Jimmy Miller can't get the shot, and Billis with a rebound. As you said at the start of the telecast, they are so much more confident, and it really shows. Of course, it helps to have that sixth man here in Cameron Indoor Stadium, the crowd, and they've been very vocal tonight. And the sixth man on its feet right now. 123 left. Duke by nine. 72-63. The Blue Devils trying to go 5-0. and They are ranked fourth in the nation. Here's a whistle and a foul away from the ball underneath. And the Cavaliers are going to have to gamble right now. That's the foul. It's called on Sheehy, his fourth. Solomon comes out of the ball game. John Johnson, number 10, checks back in. Oh. Free throw is good, but there is a technical foul called against Sheehy underneath, and Sheehy is being ejected from the ball game. Didn't exactly see what happened, but apparently Sheehy did something underneath. The official indicates he threw an elbow, and Sheehy has been ejected from the ball game. As the free throw was good, giving Duke a 72-63 lead, nine-point margin with a minute 17 left. There's a good look at Tom Sheehy, who has been... Uh, Told he will spend the last 117 on the bench, and the technical foul shot by Allery, he missed it. Sheehy leaves the ball game with 16 points, and an excellent game for the Cavaliers. Now Mahar will go to the and hits it. Dan Mahar with 17 points. Rims out on this one. Mahar has done a great job in this ballgame. For Duke, 74-63. The margin is 11. He has hit seven of eight field goal attempts. Played tough underneath. And with him as an offensive weapon, the Blue Devils are also tough. When you combine him with Allery, here is going to be a out-of-bounds call called on Amaker. Good defense. 
by John Johnson and my broadcast partner Jeff Mullins on his way down to courtside. And if time permits, uh, we'll try to get the winning coach and maybe a player or two to talk with us. We're down to the one minute mark, 74 63. Virginia down by 11. Mullen with a long range jumper, won't go. Fight for the rebound. Dawkins saves it in the corner. And Jim Miller is down and hurt for Virginia. Went down hard. He's holding his left ankle. And obviously in quite a bit of pain. Miller fighting for the rebound underneath, sandwiched between two Duke players and went down hard. Let's just hope uh, for everyone's sake, including Jim Miller's, it's not a serious injury and just something momentary. A lot of times that ankle will go sideways on you and it hurts like the Dickens for a while and then you can get up and walk away from it. Next week, Jeff Mullins and I will be in Greensboro where North Carolina will meet Wake Forest. That is another Saturday night game starting time at 8 o'clock. Check your local listings. Hope you'll be there with us. That will be our second telecast of the season. We this is a nice way to open the year for the 84-85 year of ACC basketball. And they are going to help Jim Miller off the court. It doesn't look like he is going to be able to walk on his own power, and they are keeping that left ankle off the floor. You really hate to see this. Miller going out with 17 points. It's a nice hand in the crowd here at Duke being helped off by Dan Merrifield. And let's hope uh, Jimmy Miller will benefit from the break that Virginia has for exams and will be just fine the next time they play. Duke with the basketball and leading now by 11, 74-63 with 50 seconds left. And Virginia unable, or Duke unable to get the ball inbounds within the five-second count. Mike, this Virginia team won't quit. They're still battling with just 49 seconds to go. Good defense that time. Merrifield tosses it up. The rebound goes to Duke. Here comes Amaker. And a whistle and a foul with 36 seconds left. Looks like it's going to be a two-shot foul. And we'll send freshman Kevin Strickland to the line. Here is uh, Weldon Williams checking in, and Dawkins will get a great hand as he leaves. Each and every Saturday, watch the ACC Sports Center with host Paul Cameron. Always does an excellent job for you. Next Saturday, John Kilgo will talk with Wake Forest Tyrone Bogues, the shortest player in major college basketball. We'll also have all the ACC scores, highlights, and a lot more. Check your local listings for the time and availability in your area. Paul will keep you up to date on everything. Three points for Strickland. Make it four. And it's 76-63 with 35 seconds left to go in the ballgame. Mullen gets it off to Kennedy. And Kennedy from the baseline won't go. Fight for the rebound. Merrifield trying to keep it alive. Kennedy tries to keep it alive. Merrifield spikes it like he's in a volleyball game and goes flying into the stands. Merrifield will give you everything you could ask out of a player. It may not be pretty all the time, but it's going to be 100%. Mike, it looks like Virginia's going to lose this game, but certainly they have some real pluses. The play of the freshman this game under fire certainly should be a highlight for Virginia. Williams from King. 78-63 with 12 seconds left. Mullen will try it from 20, and Mullen knocks it down. Five seconds left, Virginia. Pressing, but Duke just holding on to the basketball, and the Blue Devils will win it. 78 to 65, Terry Holland to shake hands with Mike Krzyzewski. That's the end of the game, our final again, 78-65. Duke will be back after this word from Budweiser. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. At Piedmont, every one of our jets gets a regular checkup. We take it apart, go over it inch by inch, check out hundreds of thousands of rivets, 
and examine every one of its over 92,000 parts, inside and out. Piedmont's physical fitness program. Over 900 people who never get off the ground help keep us the up-and-coming airline. Duke wins its ACC opener 78-65 over Virginia. Our Holly Farms player of the games from Virginia, Jim Miller, who had 17 points. And from Duke, Dan Mahar, who also checked in with 17. Holly Farms will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed to the institutions under a conference-approved plan in the names of these two players. And at the end of the season, each player will receive a plaque from Holly Farms recognizing this honor. Right now, let's go down to Jeff Mullins. Jeff? Two very happy young men with me tonight, Danny Mahar and Johnny Dawkins. Danny, a typical ACC opener. It was a battle from start to finish. It definitely was. It was a real tough game, but uh, we just played better and we came out on top. Johnny, were you concerned? And Coach Krzyzewski say much about the fact that Polonese was not going to play tonight. Did you think Virginia would be this tough? Oh, yes. You know, Coach had informed us that Polonese wasn't playing. And usually a team that when they lose one of the key players, they have a tendency to play very hard that game right after. And, you know, we knew we would take a very good shot from them regardless if Polonese played or not. And we did. They played very well. And I'm glad we came on top tonight. Johnny, I know you've been struggling with your outside shot a little bit. But what would you do differently tonight? Well, you know, I had been shooting you know, a little little low percentage so far, but it's been, I, I've taken great shots and coaches told me to keep on taking them and they're going to fall. He said, if you're a good shooter, you're going to start knocking them in. I'm just glad they came in tonight. Congratulations for your first conference Thank win you. and now back up to Mike Patrick. Right. Thank you very much, Jeff. And those young men uh, really earned their accolades tonight. Duke over Virginia, 78 to 65. The executive producer of ACC Basketball is John Shreves. Our coordinating producer, Quay Sistar. The producer, Mike Berg, our director, Jim Dussel, our technical director, Ken Dennis, associate directors, Alicia Kivligan and Pete Redpath. And we want to thank all the other people who helped bring you our ACC telecast. Next week at Greensboro, North Carolina against Wake Forest, 8 o'clock next Saturday night. Check your local listings for time and station for that basketball game. This ACC basketball telecast has been a presentation of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproduction. In the headlines of this hour, hundreds gathered tonight in support of Rufus Edmiston, the unsuccessful challenger for the governor's seat. We'll explain why these people came together tonight. Governor Jim Hunt comments on possible political aspirations for Terry Sanford, who's stepping down as head of Duke University. The latest is a tanning pill. Users might get more than what they bargained for. And the biggest challenge of decorating the state's capital. We'll find out from those... Seven of eight shooting start today, but how effective will he be? Virginia is coming off an upset of Virginia Tech, where Olden Polonies had 21. The sophomore center has the first meeting in Durham. Another lineup change has freshman Derek Sims at shooting guard, a move that sends Tim Mullen to the point position. And yet another change takes senior Jim Miller out of the starting lineup for Dan Merrifield. In his first game as a reserve, Miller came off the bench and scored 14 points. It's the Blue Devils of Duke against the Cavaliers of Virginia from University Hall. ACC Basketball, an exclusive presentation of Raycom Sports and Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. This is ACC Basketball with Clemson, Duke, Georgia Tech, Maryland, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Virginia, and Wake Forest. This live coverage is brought to you by Natural Light, by Piedmont Airlines, by Hardy. Virginia, where the Cavaliers are set to play host to the Blue Devils of Duke.